Boom blast. And we are live. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post game show. As always, my name is Sheldon Alexander, and this episode of Wrap It Up is brought to you by Clean Cuts Barbershop. 2013 Danforth Avenue in the east side of Toronto. Clean Cuts, the multicultural barbers that will always keep you fresh for any and all occasions. So go see Skip and the crew. As a wise man once said, tell them that I sent you. Check them out on Instagram at Clean Cuts Toronto or give them a call 416-917-4833 to book your appointments now. Raptors fans, get your Terrence Davis jerseys. How many people online are scrambling right now? trying to track down which Terrence Davis Raptors jersey are they going to get. Because if there's one way to make fans in this city to have a performance like that, when the team needs it like that, and to do it in overtime, man, Terrence Davis, that was just a great performance. And the whole time I'm watching that, I'm just thinking, man, Masai's such a G. That's it. Masai's a G. Terrence Davis comes up big. Raptors win this game in overtime and an overtime game on the second night of a back-to-back as well. That can't be emphasized enough. Raptors win 112 to 110 in Charlotte against the Hornets and they just got a great performance from Terrence Davis and this is an interesting, interesting night because earlier today when the news trickled out about just what was going on in terms of what the uh, starting lineup was for the Toronto Raptors. There was a lot of, you know, it was like, oh, Terrence Davis is in the starting lineup. And it seemed kind of weird because after last night's game, Terrence Davis played eight minutes. Eight minutes, and then Nick Nurse in the post game, when asked about Terrence Davis's eight minutes, he said it was probably five minutes too many. <laughs> so how Terrence Davis went from that to now starting the next night and leading the way for the Toronto Raptors in overtime with his 23 points, 11 rebounds, and five assists, and getting the late game stop on Terry Rozier. How that all happened? I don't know. (laughs) The one thing I will say, earlier on today at work, we were talking about it, and after the Nick Nurse announced, after Nick Nurse announced the starting lineup, I said to a couple of my boys at work, I said, is this some Nick Nurse like Jedi mind trick? Because the reality is you're on the second night of a back to back. Everyone's playing heavy minutes except Terrence Davis. So do you kind of hold his minutes down from last night on purpose so that on the second night of a back to back when you're going to need that little extra kick because you're going to ask for a lot from Kyle, you're going to ask for a lot from Serge, same with OG and McCaw. You might need that little extra boost from one of your guards. Was this some like Jedi mind trick from Nick Nurse? I don't know. But you look at it and you say, either way, Nick Nurse is a genius. Because whatever he said behind the scenes, combined with what he said on camera about Terrence Davis, clearly motivated my dude. Again, finished 8 of 16 in this game, 4 of 8 from 3, 23 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists. What a game from Terrence Davis undrafted and the Raptors just continue to find these gems. The Raptors continue to win these games. They now improved to what? Six and five since that Detroit Pistons game in which Gasol, Norm Powell and uh, Pascal Siakam all went down. I don't care who you're playing against. The Hornets are trash, but you take that dub because of all the injuries that you have. And Terrence Davis, he's a dog, man. He's a dog. And that whole, then add on top of that, getting into it with Rozier at the end of the game. (laughs) Incredible. What a performance by Rozier. I got so hype. I didn't even say thank you guys for tuning in, whether you do on Twitter live, because we are the only live and interactive Raptors post game show there is. Thank you guys for tuning in on Twitter at Shell Alexander, as you do after each and every Toronto Raptors game. Same thing goes for Instagram, taking your comments and questions there as well at Sheldon Alexander. And the key to if you're on Instagram, you want to see the full feed, the proper audio, the full set, the actual angle. Just go to the link in bio on Instagram, you get the full feed. Now, if you want to stay on Instagram, cool. Take your comments and questions there because, as mentioned, we are interactive. And if, in case you ever miss the pod, just know you can catch up with us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, 
Google Play, YouTube. Just like and subscribe there. Find us. Look for On Blast Podcast. On Blast is a network. Wrap It Up is a show. And it's a show where we enjoy Raptors games like the one you just watched. Because, man, that was a great game. Again, the Raptors, any win. I said this from the moment those three guys went down. Any win you get in that run, you take it. Because I don't know how this team was going to play, how many teams, and then Fred goes down. So now you're talking about, as we mentioned last night, 60%. It's about 60% of your total offense out of the lineup, right? Four of your top six rotation guys out of the lineup. And on the second night of a back-to-back where everyone played heavy minutes, the Raptors, would you have blamed? It's funny because talking to a bunch of people today, a lot of people thought, oh no, this was a win. The Hornets aren't good. And I was kind of worried about this game because I thought, regardless of who you're playing, I don't know what to expect from this Raptors team. Because this isn't your normal Raptors team, right? You're talking, who, who'd they start tonight? They started Terrence Davis, McCaw, Kyle, OG, and Serge. That's not your normal Raptors team. Who's going to get the points? Where's the production going to come from? What's it going to make of your bench on the second night of a back-to-back? especially when you know that traditionally your bench players play better at home than they do on the road. And the reality is that held true tonight in this game. You got some solid minutes from Matt Thomas and Hollis Jefferson. Boucher was was solid, his normal active self, but he went one for five. Brissett went 0 for five. You got three of nine from Matt Thomas. So your bench didn't give you that much. So it comes down to your starters. And Kyle Lowry and Serge, I feel okay in saying this, Kyle Lowry and Serge left it all on the floor. Those two guys were exhausted. And I can emphasize that, or I can assume that, I should say, just by their free throws. Down the stretch, Kyle in this game shot 5 of 8 from from the free throw line. Kyle doesn't miss free throws. Kyle is a very good free throw shooter. But he missed two free throws, very key free throws late. Serge Ibaka... Also missed key free throws late. But, 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 Serge Ibaka did hit the most important free throws of this game. Because what a crunch time it was. And we talked about what Terrence Davis did in this game for the Toronto Raptors. And it started off right from the beginning. Terrence Davis came out with a purpose early on and kept the Raptors in it. Because the offense struggled at times for the Toronto Rap for the Raptors. Whereas from the Hornets side of things... They were, this is how you know they're a really bad team. They're really feeling themselves early on in this game. There are points in this game where they're hitting shots and they're like, you know, leaving the hand in the air. They're wolfing it up with the crowd. And it's like, really? Like, it just seemed weird. But that's what a bad team does, right? They over-celebrate things that don't really matter, like having the lead in the third quarter of a game. But either way, let's get to the point. Terrence Davis gets a start under so much of the microscope because of how he's didn't play the night before. And he's the key part in an 11, four Raptors run early. And my guy hits, he was hitting threes. And the thing that really told me that this guy was on one early was that drive to the basket where he, he drove into the lane and just threw down a huge dunk. And I don't think we've seen that explosiveness from Terrence Davis in a couple weeks. It was one of those things where we saw that early on in the year where he's getting in the lane and he's throwing it down and you could see him jump with anyone in the league. But seeing that dunk early on, I thought, okay, my guy's ready to play. Message sent. But then he kept going. And he started out with 11 points, going four or five from his first five attempts that he made in this game. And the thing that was key, he wasn't forcing anything. As mentioned, hits four of his first five shots. And I remember one of the plays right after that, he could have taken another three. It would have been a tougher shot. He could have shot it. It would have been okay, right? Because you're feeling it. But instead, my guy didn't force it, swung the ball around like the Raptors offense does, and they end up getting another shot. It extended the lead. It made it a 13-0 run. Raps were up five early. And by the time Terrence Davis went to the bench for the first time, he had 13 points in the first quarter. And the reason why that was so key was because everyone else was struggling early for the Raps. And 
the the lineup once TD went to the bench and Lowry also went to the bench. It was McCaw, Matt Thomas, Rondé, Chris Boucher, and O'Shea Brissett. And these guys were struggling to get anything going. And credit to the Hornets coaching staff, they decided that was the time that they were going to put on a full court press to really sort of force the Raps into turnovers. And it worked. And luckily for the Raps, Matt Thomas hit a shot at the buzzer that gave them, that cut the lead to two. But point remained, Raps were still down after one. Hornets were shooting 61% from the floor. And to be honest, it wasn't looking good. Nurse had to bring Kyle Lowry back just to try to get someone to make to make plays, to make shots. And the thing that I thought was really cool was Patrick McCaw. I don't know what happened. Kyle, Kyle went came in quickly, then went back to the bench. And I don't know if there was a pep talk that was had in between with Patrick McCaw, but he turned on his like point guard hat and really started doing it all for the raps. And Patrick McCaw has been kind of a interesting character in Raptor land. People have very strong opinions about why Nick Nurse loves Patrick McCaw so much. Whereas I've always thought McCaw is a very solid player. You know, bare minimum, you're going to get solid defense. He's not going to try to do too much on offense. And this is interesting time for Patrick McCaw because you kind of need him to be more aggressive. With all the injuries the Raptors have at this point, you need more creators than just Kyle Lowry. You need more buckets than just, than just Surge. So you needed McCaw to make plays. And I thought the Raps did a really good job just in terms of, first off, they called a great play for Matt Thomas, which is a play we see all the time where you run off the double screen at the top of the key. Matt Thomas was covered, but as the play develops, McCaw cuts to the basket. Great pass from Matt Thomas. Finds McCaw for the layup. McCaw then pulls up, hits a three. Now he's feeling confident. Then McCaw drives, hit the tough floater. And that's the same thing we talk about even with OG, right? It's, can you hit the shots first off, get the layups towards the basket, then you extend it out and you hit those three-pointers. It's funny how that always seems to happen where the three-point shots fall after you make a layup or two. But we saw that from the Toronto Raptors here, and especially with Patrick McCaw, who had a great, really good run there for the Raptors. And I thought was a huge part in keeping them in the game. Because until late, where Kyle hit a couple shots, Kyle really struggled in this game. And you know that Kyle was probably trying to pace himself, right, and save himself for the end of the game. But McCaw did a really good job after a tough start. But in that second quarter, he ran the offense for the Raps. He was aggressive, scoring, getting guys buckets, and really giving the Raptors some life. And meanwhile, on the flip side, Huge shout out to Bridges. Bridges was just bombing threes the whole game. Finished the game with six threes, 10 of 15 overall shooting, 26 points from Bridges. And my guy had nine rebounds as well. Super explosive, had a couple like huge dunks. And as mentioned, the Hornets were really in a position in this game where they threatened to pull away at certain points. And it was a game of runs as the modern day NBA is, but it just seemed that they they were hitting streaks, right? And Bridges had like 17 points early on into the middle of that second quarter. Your man's Rogier was hitting shots as well as Rogier hit back-to-back -back threes. And the Raps offense started to struggle a bit before Chris Boucher came in, did what Chris Boucher normally does. He answered with a three, but most importantly, was giving energy. I thought that was really key. And... The other key part to, to keep the game close was McCaw just making great decisions again. Getting out on the fast break, and you have Boucher on one side, Matt Thomas on the other, and he makes a correct play, finding Matt Thomas for three, keeping the wraps in it. It was a great run, and I'm emphasizing this because at this point, Serge Ibaka started 0 for 4 in the game, and so did Kyle Lowry. So... It was huge for Patrick McCaw to get off to such a great start and buy time until your main dogs, Serge and Kyle, could get some buckets. And that did happen. Kyle Lowry steps up big, hits some threes, and Raps end up on an 8-0 run, take the lead. And at that point, the Raps end up leading at the half. They're up five points. They're able to close out that first half on a 15-4 run. And the key here for the Raps were 
they had 21 points off 13 turnovers in the first half. That's what we normally talk about, especially with all the guys you have out. You got to get out and run. And it's tough to do. It's it's easier said than done, especially when you're talking about playing on the second night of back-to-back and being so short-handed. It's tough for you to get out and run constantly over and over again in the modern NBA, the way that the game is played now. But the Raptors did exactly that. They left it all out on the floor in this game. And it was a beautiful thing to see. And I'll give someone else some credit as well in this game. OG, I thought, played a lot better. And we had, he was a topic of conversation on last night's pod. We're talking about OG, who had struggled for the most part in a chance where he really had an opportunity to take a huge step forward with all of the injuries. And I thought OG tonight, 19 points, 7 rebounds, 8 of 13 shooting from OG, 3 of 4 from 3-point land. But the key for OG, and I've stressed this over and over again, so this is not hindsight, right? Check the tapes. We got receipts. I've always said OG needs to take a piece out of Siakam's book last year and just get more easy baskets, whether it's cutting to the basket in the half court, whether it's leaking out, whether it's getting on the offensive glass. But I always think that once OG gets a layup or gets a dunk, then steps out and shoots a three, he's way more successful. And we saw that in tonight's game, a solid game from OG and Anobi. And getting to 19 points, I mean, the Raptors desperately needed that. Desperately needed that. And when this game was just going back and forth in the second half, and these two teams are just basically trading runs, and the Raps at one point were up 12 and things were good, but again, they're shorthanded. So you just know the chance was going to come where the Hornets had an opportunity to get back in the game. And the Hornets were able to answer a crazy run by the Toronto Raptors with a 14-0 run of their own to have them get back into the lead. And part of that wasn't just a Hornets run. The Raptors offense went cold. There was almost like a six-minute run in that third quarter where the Raptors just couldn't get a bucket. They started out 0 for 11. They had an 0 for 11 run in that third quarter as well. And Matt Thomas was missing a lot of shots. And, you know, he's a three-point specialist. But at the same time, the reminder is that Matt Thomas was playing his third game in a row in consecutive nights. Because remember, he played in the 905 game on Monday. So that's a back to back to back, right? So when my guy's missing shots, I, I stopped and I was like, oh yeah, my guy's, it's okay if he doesn't have legs. Like it would make sense for Matt Thomas not to have legs at this stage, right? But either way, Raptors with their defense, and I mean, let's be honest, some terrible shot selection from the Hornets, the Raps were able to stay in this game. And even though they were struggling so hard in the fourth quarter, they started out that fourth quarter one of 12 from the floor. They were able to still keep it close. Even though there was a huge run by the the Hornets, 13-2 run that extended it to a 10-point lead, and a Nick Nurse timeout at that point, it was 94-84 after Nick Nurse called timeout, and the Raptors seemed to be on the ropes. But... What do we know about this team? And what do we know about Nick Nurse? Whatever's being said in that huddle, it works. Because they come right out of that timeout. And OG hits a huge three. Serge Ibaka then comes out. They run a little pick and roll. Serge hits a jumper. And they started to get the stops. Kyle the Serge. Kyle gets an and one. Or sorry, Serge got the and one. All of a sudden, you're talking about a four-point game. And they just kept getting stops. And while you're getting stops, you're buying time for shots to start to go in. And Kyle Lowry was struggling. At that point, he was two of nine in the game before finally hitting a three. And you could tell it was one of those things, again, not quite as much as what we saw from Kyle Lowry in uh, Brooklyn the other night. But as he shot it, it finally rattled in and he turned to someone in the crowd who probably had a little something to say to him. And... Lowry hitting that big, big three cut the game to a one-point lead. And down the stretch, it was just back and forth and back and forth. And credit to Terrence Davis again, who, I mean, he was doing it on both ends of the floor because he was creating shots. And the reality is that he was creating shots on one end, but doing great 
things on the defensive end as well. And a huge, 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 huge play down the stretch was Kyle Lowry taking a shot, Terrence Davis getting on the glass and just tipping it back out to Lowry, who then got the switch that had Bismack Biombo guarding him. Kyle was then able to nice Bismack, drive all the way to the to the hoop, get that layup to make it a 100-99 to game with 17 seconds left. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, the Raps, the Raps might have this one. 17 seconds left, you're up one. And then just a bonehead play from Serge Ibaka, right? Bonehead play by Serge Ibaka, who pulled on the jersey of, was it P.J. Washington, I think? And the reason why I'm going to say that was a really silly play is because even if P.J. Washington beats you to the three-point line, right, off that screen, he's not turning and shooting a three to beat you. Do you know what I mean? So... It was just a needless play, but the huge part about it was once you foul someone before the ball is inbounded, then by NBA rules, it's one shot plus the ball. So Terry Rozier was able to go to the line, hit the free throw to tie it, and then the the Hornets had a full possession, a chance to win the game with 17 seconds left and the game tied at one. And they just ran, I don't I can't even say they ran a play. Because Devontae Graham just stood at half court, basically, let pretty much the whole clock run off before he took a terrible floater in the lane, and we end up in overtime, where again, it was the Terrence Davis show where back-to-back threes to give the Raps the lead, and you're, you're talking about going back and forth, back and forth the whole time, and finally, that huge Terrence Davis play, because I mentioned the Lowry missing free throws is... He and Serge had no legs. That's where the the missed free throws in my mind come from. But Terrence Davis, he's the one that made the key pass to Serge. Now, it was a risky play. Serge made a great catch. Serge hit the free throws to give the Raps the lead. But Terrence Davis had his fingerprints all over this game. And it was just great to see, especially culminating with the way that it should, if you know the guts and the heart and soul of this Raptors team, a stop at the defensive end. Just great defense on Rozier, forcing him into a tough shot and letting Rozier know about it. I don't know exactly what was said. I'm sure the post-game comments will be interesting because Rozier seems to be someone who uh, likes to have his opinions known. I'll say it that way. Uh, But Terrence didn't back down. But Rozier gave the point into the face. And if you listen to the Ball on Blast pod, me and Webby, we've talked about this before, right? The levels of disrespect. Oh, no. You know what? It was on the You Killed It podcast with with, uh, my guy, John Chidley Hill. Something happened in the challenge house, and we were talking about the levels of disrespect. And when you point in another grown-ass person's face, it's a level of disrespect. (laughs) But everyone got in the way. Everyone backed up Rogier and TD. But TD wasn't backing down. And again, Raptors come up with a massive win, 112 to 110 over the Hornets on the second night of a back-to-back. A great, great win. Raptors fans are fired up. My mentions on both sides are just on fuego fire right now. So, you know, either way, guys, I'm so ecstatic about what went on in this game. And I want to hear from you guys, as we always do, on what we call the Ask on Blast segment, where we just take your comments and questions. Because, again, the whole purpose of this pod is to have a place, a platform, an avenue where we can share and discuss what just happened in great Toronto Raptor games like the one that we just saw. And the reality is, at the same time, if you're looking at what this Raptors team has done, (laughs) there's no doubt that everyone wants to talk some more about this Toronto Raptors team. Because watching performances like that, how can you not fall in love with this team? So let's get to some comments, as mentioned, because we are the only live and interactive Toronto Raptors post-game show that there is. So let's get to this. And Matthew checks in on Twitter. Matthew says, yo, why was Nick Nurse hating on Terrence Davis yesterday? Did you see his comment? What the F? And yeah, we talked about that early. And I don't know, Nick Nurse, Nick Nurse clearly was trying to make a point. And maybe he knows Terrence Davis enough by now to know hey, maybe I just needed to give him a little kick in the ass, you know, the proverbial kick in the ass to, like, get his uh, his mojo back, you know? 
say and and also it's kind of like a a good cop bad cop routine right like the bad cop's gonna come out tell you about all the things you didn't do and then the good cop's gonna say okay well here's your chance to prove me wrong it seemed to work it seemed to work uh jay simmons checks in or jay simone my bad says should have won yesterday too they got robbed i mean yes obviously the the moving screen on ronde before the dame lillard logo three to tie the game was a horrible call raps blew the lead late but hey you got to take the good with the bad and the learning experience from you know not being able to execute down the stretch in last game to being able to execute in this game you got to take the good with the bad and it's all right take the wins when you can get them learn from the losses that you had last night it's okay uh let's see captain save a bro on on twitter checks in and says my heart wouldn't stop pounding my dude hey are you not entertained <laughs> right great night of basketball raptors fans loving that uh let's see more comments here i take the risk on twitter says macaw is so whack lol i hope he's being facetious there because I mean, I thought that was a great game had from Patrick McCaw. McCaw was doing a little bit of everything, and I think the big thing from Patrick McCaw, he finished with 13 points but 11 assists, leading the Raptors in assists. That's huge. That is huge. When you're getting that playmaking from someone other than Kyle Lowry, that is massive. And again, I thought it was huge what McCaw did with the bench because that's when you really need it, when Kyle Lowry's not on the floor. Um suka sukalu hope i'm pronouncing that correctly says whoa 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 td put a lid on nick nurse's comments last night i think it's just you know uh someone else says nick nurse looks like a genius for challenging td too if we're gonna be honest nick nurse has seemed to pull all the right strings this entire season and this was just another example of that how do i motivate my players how do i get to my players and then also the other thing is Davis talked about it in the post game. He sat down with Norm. They watched film. Norm was gassing them up. There's a real team atmosphere with this squad, a real family atmosphere with this squad where they're looking out for each other. They're trying to help each other. And that's a great thing to see as well because it's so helpful. It's not a competition thing amongst themselves. They know that it's next man up. And Norm knows that helping Terrence Davis only benefits the team. And hey, Maybe that is another angle of the good cop, bad cop, right? Nick Nurse says all the negative stuff. Now I'm going to send one of my vets or the OGs on the team to go talk to TD, to get him to relax, to emphasize the things that you need him to do at this stage of his career for this team. It was great. It was a great, great, great performance. Uh, more comments. Karen says, watching some stuff from the other games, there was lots of tension tonight, players having words, etc." It's true. It wasn't, Karen's totally right. It wasn't just uh, Terrence Davis and Rogier at the end of the game. If you remember earlier on in the game, Zeller and uh, Chris Boucher got into it. And that one was a little funny because I don't know what Zeller did to Boucher, but Boucher got right back up and like went in Zeller's face and started telling him something. He started mean mugging him. And Zeller kind of looked at him and kind of like laughed. And Boucher is just like, no, I'm being serious. And on the next play, Boucher fouls Zeller. And Zeller just kind of like went over to him and gave him like the big boy slap on the ass. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. But you love the intensity that you see from these kids. They're hungry. They're not backing down. And that is the key that you know you're going to get minutes when you're hungry. And one thing you can say about these Raptors kids, this Raptors team, because they're a bunch of undrafted dudes, a bunch of dudes drafted late in the first round or in the second round or not drafted at all. But what comes with that is a mentality. And it's a hunger. It's a chip on your shoulder that you're not backing down from anybody. And it's you just love to see it. Uh, let me switch over and get some comments here from Instagram as well. Exodus Movement says, Nurse knows his, pl his players' potentials. It's totally true. Nick Nurse has... Nick Nurse, man, I don't know. Nick Nurse has got to be feeling himself because he's been making great moves from last year to this year, and 
It hasn't been easy at all. Hasn't been easy at all. And as Matthew points out on Inst- on uh, Twitter, Nurse is also leading the league in technical fouls. <laughs> says, Nurse needs to, he goes, Mans needs to play his guitar and relax. That's funny. That's very funny. Uh, Mike checks in on Twitter and says, the Lowry layup was a big boy bucket. It really was. And it was Kyle Lowry. The, the key to that was, I think it was the example of Kyle Lowry pacing himself in this game and knowing that down the stretch, like in crunch time, crunch time, that's when the team would need him. So he tried to make plays early. Shots wasn't falling, but he stayed in the game, stayed locked in, played over 40 minutes as this game went into overtime, but hit the big shots, that huge layup when his team needed him. And it was a great play because, <clears throat> again, I mentioned the fact that he got the switch, so Bismack was on him. And a lot of times players might settle for the, the jumper in that just because that's their go-to move. But Lowry instead got all the way to the bucket and to be able to finish the layup with Bismack trailing, and we know Bismack is a serious shot blocker, but that was key to see from Kyle Lowry, and a, a big boy bucket indeed. Totally agree. Uh, someone checks in and says, TD would mash Rozier? <laughs> I don't know who would win in a fight. It, I don't know, but that's hilarious. Um, more comments here. Diversified Youth says, anyone who's played ball will understand how deep you have to dig in a game like this mental fortitude i mean the toronto raptors and what they're able to do man on the second night of a black on a back-to-back and the heavy minutes that were played the night before i'm wondering if this was a nick nurse jedi mind trick where he basically saved terrence davis's minutes from last night knowing that he would need someone to give them a, an extra boost in tonight's game i don't know if nick nurse is that much of an evil genius to concoct this plan but would you be surprised if that was the case, <laughs> right? Like, think about it. Terrence Davis only played eight minutes last night. How do you go from playing eight minutes to then starting and then leading the way the next game? I don't know. But Nick Nurse is a G. Ann checks in on Instagram, and Ann says, Serge had to put in work in overtime. We were there because of him. Serge Ibaka. I thought he already had the seven straight double-doubles, but during the broadcast, they were saying that tonight's game was a career high for Serge with his seventh straight double-double. He finished this game, and again, after starting off poorly, Serge finished with 23 points and 11 rebounds, 10 of 19 from the floor, so shot a great percentage, one of one from three, meaning he wasn't forcing up shots, but 39 minutes from Serge and 39 hard minutes. Serge Ibaka left everything on the floor. And I mentioned the two free throws that he missed, but those clutch free throws at the end to give the Raps the win, you know that's when my guy is tired. Those are the most difficult free throws because you have no legs. Remember, Serge playing on the second night of a back-to-back, playing heavy, heavy minutes as the Raps, like, lone, true, like, traditional big man huge shouts to surge massive massive shouts to surge uh pastor wesley says love to see norm's leadership having film sessions and pep talks with davis for sure and i think that that's an interesting part because it's just something that was passed down to norm right and you're like passing that along the one thing with the raptors it's always kind of been this kind of family oriented team in which the sum of the parts was always greater than the whole. And so Kyle Lowry and and DeMar were always like the two quote-unquote best players. But at the end of the day, the Raptors were the team that they were getting, you know, improving each and every year because of the supporting cast. It was always a team environment and it was always like the collective. So to see Norm passing that on, you know, from him being mentored, even if you go back to last year, from Danny and Kawhi, because we know him and Kawhi had a good relationship, and him passing that along to Terrence Davis, that's huge. That's a great thing to see, and that's great for your organization as well. Tammy says, was awesome watching the dudes in the Blazers coaching in OT. <laughs> they did show that shot at the, near the end of the game, where it seemed like every one of the guys who were injured 
were kind of had a different raptor that was playing that they were kind of like giving a little extra encouragement to is very interesting to see but another great game for sure uh j87 lee says you know why macaw only has a plus five it's because he was part of the bench lineup that cost us the lead with dumb turnovers and refusals to pass and refusal to pass to an open shooter like matt thomas i guess that's an argument going on about patrick macaw i don't get why patrick macaw is such a like you know such a, a buzzword among raptor fans why raptors fans seem to be so like angry I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't get why you dislike Patrick McCarr, why it's even like a discussion to me that my guy plays defense. He doesn't force anything and he puts in work with the opportunities that he's given and he doesn't do too much. I just think it's awesome. Uh, Raptors Homer checks in on Twitter and says, fearless forecast shell raps would be number two seed by the all-star break. Uh, I mean, I, I don't even know what to make of this Raptors team at this point. I don't know what to predict what this Raptors team's going to do night in, night out. I just know that they play hard every night, which gives them a chance to win. And I know I re keep repeating that every week, every pod, but the reason why I emphasize that is because it's the NBA. In this modern day NBA where you got a lot of dudes who, it's just a different game, right? Effort, ball movement, in this league, if you give that every single night, you can be a 500 team. So now you emphasize that with what this Raptors team is. They're just in every game. They leave it all out on the floor. Their defense will always keep them in the game. And their offense, their trust in the offense in terms of ball movement and sharing the ball and not just taking ridiculous shots like you saw the Hornets do down the stretch. Like you could tell that's why that Hornets team is so bad. Their shot selection at certain points so horrible you have Rozier just taking shots for absolutely no reason just like tough tough threes same thing with Graham and you flip that over to the Raptors and the Raptors might miss shots but they're not taking bad shots they miss good shots within the flow of the offense and Raptors fans you got to appreciate the fact of this team that you have because there's not many teams in this league that could be missing this many pieces and still be having this level of success Fly Miss checks in on Instagram and says, I feel like we ain't going to see what our rotation is going to be like this year till it's playoff time. <laughs> I mean, the wait for players to start coming back, I think Norm could be back on Sunday. Uh, maybe there's uh, some post game that's come down. I haven't checked yet. But uh, Nick Nurse seemed to indicate that uh, Norman Powell is close. So you'd assume Norm's close, and then soon after is supposed to be Marc Gasol. Now, Fred Van Fleet, no idea when Freddie's coming back. And Siakam seems to be working his way back, but I don't know if Siakam's going to be back next week. But even when those dudes come back, I expect Kyle to start, you got to start getting Kyle a bit of a break at certain points, especially with the heavy minutes that he's been getting. And Freddie, I mean, the injuries have sort of forced Freddie into getting some rest, but you're just seeing the toll that has been taken upon some of these guys with all the injuries. And I don't know if you will get an opportunity or when the opportunity will come to see what this Raptors team is with everyone in, in, in tow, because guys, when everyone goes down, the other guys have to pick up the slack and it's mega minutes for Kyle. It's mega minutes for Pascal when Kyle and Serge first went down and you're seeing the the reflection of that now. Um, we the Mutt says, I just want everybody to be healthy again. <laughs> uh, Lowry has a lot on his shoulders. I'm going through some more comments here. Let's see. Uh, hold on. There's something I wanted to read here. Uh, so that guy, Damone, says, to be honest, I never have much confidence in OG, so his inconsistency didn't surprise. I'm just annoyed that I'm right so far this season. It's true, and it'll be interesting to see if OG can piece together back-to-back, -back, um, if OG can piece together back-to-back -back good games, because they need more games from OG like tonight, just because of the fact that without these guys, you need more people pushing at least 15 points. And... OG has to be one of those guys. As long as Norm, as long as Freddie, as long as Pascal and Gasol are out of the lineup, 
OG has to be one of those guys that's getting you to about 15 points. Um, my guy AB checks in and says, just saw a stat on ESPN. Pat McCaw has the most assists tonight of all the games this evening. Pat McCaw leading the entire NBA in assists tonight. All right, we'll take that. We'll take that. Let me switch over to Twitter. Uh, Jay Shutterberg says, Norm coming back would be huge. I mean, at this point, you just need buckets. And one thing Norm and Powell does, he gives you buckets. <laughs> he's not shy. One thing you'll never hear anyone say about Norman Powell is that he's shy about uh, taking shots. Uh, let's get some more comments. There's so many, and so because it's such a crazy game, normally I try to wrap up the pot at this point, but because it's such a crazy game and the people are fired up, I'm going to just read some more comments. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> My guy AB says, Macaw equals Robert Ori 2.0. Hey, I mean, Macaw, he, he's a ring keeper right now, right? Macaw keeps getting them rings, so if that's any sign of at least getting to the finals, sure. We'll take that. Uh, let's see here. More comments. Uh, Akeem brings up the fact, the great thing that our schedule gets easier. And I wrote this down last game, and I didn't mention it in the last pod, but if I remember correctly, the Raptors' strength of schedule, right? The Raptors' strength of schedule so far, right? This was heading into last night's game. So heading into last night's game, the Raptors had played the fifth toughest schedule in the NBA, right? And that's by record. That's basically just adding up the records of what the teams had last night. So again, heading into last night, the Raptors had the fifth toughest schedule in the league. The rest of the way, the Raptors had the 30th most difficult schedule for the rest of the season. Now again, obviously that changes based on records and who plays who night in, night out. But as of last night, heading into last night's game, the rest of the way, the Raptors had the 30th most difficult schedule, or an easier way to say that is the easiest schedule in the league the rest of the way. So it is a blessing, and with all the injuries, it couldn't come at a better time because for the Raptors to be where they are right now, with the schedule they've had so far, with the injuries they've been dealing with, Nick Nurse and Masai, man. Nick Nurse and Masai. Great time to be a Raptors fan. Great time to, to you know, be the guy, Masai Ujiri, who begged to have Raptors 905 and talked about how important it would be for the development of the Raptors club. I mean, is there anything Masai has done that has been, you know, a mistake? <laughs> I don't know. Everyone is so fired up. People are saying, gosh, I can't sleep tonight. Last night was tough. And it's funny because that's just a bounce back, right? That's a bounce back from one night to the next. Raptors fans upset last night after a very tough loss to Carmelo and the Blazers. Raptors fans very excited tonight after a huge overtime win against the Charlotte Hornets as the Raptors win 112 to 110. And some of these, I mean, they had three Raptors, three Raptors starters with double doubles, led by Terrence Davis, who finished with 23 points, 11 rebounds, add in five assists for Terrence Davis. Patrick McCaw, 13 points, 11 assists. Serge Ibaka, 23 points, 11 rebounds. Serge Ibaka with his career best seventh straight double double. And just for kicks, Kyle Lowry finished with 15 and nine. So he's one shy off a of double double. Those are the performances you need. And again, the Hornets are not a good team. But with the roster the Raptors are putting out there, some of the lineup combinations you're seeing out there for the Toronto Raptors, again, it's basically Kyle, Serge, OG, and the Raptors 905. No? Or sorry, Rondé. Rondé, I'll say. And even your man's, uh, what's his name? Played. Stanley Johnson played on 905 earlier this week. So... It's basically, again, Serge, OG, Kyle, McCaw, and Raptors 905. And I don't know, man. I, I Every time I think I'm surprised by this Raptors team, they go out and do something else and just gut out another performance that makes it just so fun to watch. And it's why, again, if you go back to last night's podcast, again, there's receipts. So this is not hindsight. 
after last night's game, I, I was telling Raptor fans, you can't be mad after that loss. How can you be mad after that loss? You blew a game late in which Dame Lillard and Carmelo Anthony just hit big shots down the stretch where I've stated, I'm on the record as saying from the start of the year, this Raptors team at full strength, I'm worried about who's making the big time shots in crunch time. So this Raptors team not at full strength, of course I'm expecting them to blow some games late where they can't create, they can't make buckets. And so to have them come through a night after they couldn't execute late, but then now have a game tonight on the second night of a back-to-back with no legs and come through in the clutch to win in overtime? How can you not be excited about this team if you're a Toronto Raptors fan? They do it again, and this has been so much fun, guys. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Whether you do, you rock with us live on Twitter, each and every Raptors game, at Shell Alexander, giving me your comments and questions. Greatly appreciated. As Logan says, damn, I missed this game, and clearly it was a good one. TD2 going off. That's awesome. Well, Logan, you know what? We're here for you. Glad you tuned into the podcast late, but catch up on the game, and then you can catch up on the pod which you can find on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube. Just search On Blast Podcast. As always, remember, On Blast is a network. Wrap it up is a show. And you can find that podcast anywhere. Like and subscribe as we continue to spread the love, spread the gospel that is the We the North Nation, the Raptors fans that deserve their own post-game show because they are the defending NBA champions. And you guys are continuously here, rock with me live after each and every game. And I really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun to be able to talk to you guys and get the sense of what the fan base is feeling night in, night out. So enjoy this win, Raptors fans. And you know what? There's a bit of a rest. So hopefully the Raptors can get more healthy and they continue to climb the win column and the Eastern Conference standings because that was yet another great, great win for this team who continues to gut out performances while being shorthanded. So thanks, guys, again for tuning in. And again, my name is Sheldon Alexander, and I really appreciate you guys because I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps postgame show, as always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time, see ya. On Blast.